us about how, how the facelift has changed uh, over the last 20 years. Oh, fantastic question. Uh, in general, we're all taught to, in, in a regular facelift, uh, based on hiding the scars, the most easy way to hide the scars, and that is um, to lift up or loosen the skin that's loose and wrinkled and fallen downward and to pull it in a backward direction backward and slightly upward. That's the most convenient for hiding the scars. Unfortunately, uh, we age with gravity pulling straight down. And so it's, it's really correcting a problem that occurred when the, the face and the tissues in the face moved downward. And we're hiding that or trying to correct it by pulling them backwards. I think that uh, ideally you need to pull it back into the direction from where it came. The trick is hiding those scars to make them much less discernible or not discernible at all. And uh, that's been a difficult problem for a lot of years, but the, the problems have been worked out and actually it makes for shorter scars, uh, a lot less lifting uh, or loosening of the skin from the underlying tissue. And so it's made for an, an easier surgery for the surgeon. Uh, it's, it's less invasive but it gives tremendously better results in terms of improvement of all parts of the face. Not only the middle part of the face, the cheek area, but the lower face. And in fact, the neck has tightening. When you pull in that direction in a straight upward direction rather than pulling back, much better than when you pull back in the old traditional way. Uh, I saw this on a show last night. Uh, I, I forget what show it was on, but they used a Latin term, and it, it basically says what doctors, many doctors are about, and they're many times very resistant to change or to learn or to adopt new techniques. It's very easy to keep doing it the same way you learned in plastic surgery school. But um, we find sometimes things that make it better, make it easier, progress um, moves forward and uh, the first light bulb that was invented was not very bright but they've come up with a lot of improvements since then. This is a, a significant improvement in facelift. People recover faster, the incisions are shorter uh, and the, the best part about it is it, it looks more natural than the facelifts of old. That's great and, and who, who, are the brave, who was the brave soul or the brave souls that, that first brought this new sort of technique to, to bear? There's a, that's a, a great question. There, there's uh, several surgeons in Belgium that came up with this. Europe is sometimes the genesis of uh, some great ideas in plastic surgery, and they you know, may have a different uh, medical legal environment or some ability to explore different options without the repercussions. Um, and they, they're, uh, they're, uh, there's, there are actually two textbooks that have been written on this, probably within the last five to seven years. Uh, that have shown patient after patient about the significant, how the improvement is so much better than anything that we've done in the past. I've changed my facelift techniques and, and since those books came out, I've done all of my facelifts in that direction, pulling straight up rather than pulling back. And the result in terms of patient satisfaction and appearance and before and afters is just is light years ahead. Interesting. Now, is there an optimal candidate type for this uh, sort of facelift? Uh, or, or, you know, who, who, who's going to benefit the most from this? Yes. Well, I find that people in their late 30s, mid 40s, early 40s, may just need a portion of this facelift, um, like a section of it. And that is the part where we lift the middle part of the face. For example, if you just lift the cheek, uh, take the volume of the cheek, which has fallen off of the cheekbone, and then lifted it and, and elevated it back onto the cheek itself. It improves the lower eyelid area. It softens the fold along the, the nose and the mouth. And then it gets rid of the speed bump that sometimes we have along this area here. So it improves that just with that simple maneuver. It's called a mid-face lift or a cheek lift. Not many doctors do that because it's a steep learning curve. It's fraught with a, a lot of potential problems. But um, I've, I've been doing that for right 10 or 12 years and, and do it pretty comfortably and uh, have pretty consistent and, and fantastic results from that. It's very, very, um, it instills a lot of youth into people that have that early aging. 
they may not, in that age group, the 35 to 45 age group, may not have enough loose skin to actually need a facelift. Um, when patients are in their late 40s, early 50s, 60s, they'll need that cheek lift, but they'll also need to incorporate the other part of the facelift, which is lifting in front of the ear, and again, lifting straight up. I often use the analogy with patients that when you make your bed, uh, you can't make the bed just from your side of the bed. You need to go over to your husband's side of the bed and pull the sheets tight on that side too. So we lift back here and then lift in the front. And what that does is, is this whole unit moves in an upward direction. And really, re it moves the volume that's moved down to the lower part of the face back up into the middle part of the face. And people look tremendously improved, youthful, invigorated. It's, it's an amazing transformation.